There's no actual news in this smartphone show due to lack of space, but I did attend the local Apple iPhone launch at my local car phone warehouse, and I fought off the queue of six people. Anyway, I had a play with the Apple iPhone, and there's more iPhone coverage coming up in a couple of months' time. Watch this space. It's all very well wanting a smartphone, but let's say you don't really need a QWERTY keyboard, uh, despite my arguments later in the show. Let's say you don't need a fancy auto-focusing multi-megapixel camera. You need a reliable, stable device on which you can keep track of your life, of email with some web browsing and music or video consumption thrown in, and perhaps a few games as well. Oh, and you'd like it to look really stylish. Uh, you'd like it to hardly take up any room, and you'd like it to be indestructible. It sounds like a requirement that just got a lot tougher again, but then don't worry because it's a perfect description of this, the brand new Nokia E51. First impressions are good because of the black and silver styling, much in vogue these days, with a mainly metal construction that should last for years of rough and tumble without giving up. The second impression is pretty good too, as it dawns on you that not only is the E51 styled like the E90 Monster that I like to talk about, it's got the same software and much the same power under the hood. With Nokia's business focus in their E-series range, we're talking Active Notes, Team Suite, Nokia Maps, Search and Quick Office, although only the viewers by default. But there's also 3.5G data, Wi-Fi, the latest media codecs, even an FM radio. Plus, it's S60, so you can install all the extra games and apps you want. Quite a package in something that's only 12mm thick and 45mm wide, and which looks like a phone, i.e. it doesn't single you out as a geek. For the technically minded, it runs S60 3rd edition, feature pack 1, has 48 megabytes of free RAM, i.e. plenty, and has a biggish 1050 milliamp hour battery that means you don't have to charge the E51 every single night. A few extra points of note, the screen is transflective, which means great contrast outdoors and sunlight, just as on all the other E-series devices. The usual S60 applications key has been rebranded with a home icon. This is an insanely great idea and clues new users instantly that this is the button to press in order to get to all the shiny coloured application icons, iPhone style. There are also three other configurable shortcut buttons, by default mapped to calendar, contacts and messaging. With a lot of users never seeming to really master multitasking under S60, this should help them zip between the most common apps nice and quickly. As you can probably tell, I've had quite a job finding anything negative in the E51, but it's worth mentioning that the, the rubberized side buttons for voice recording, voice tag and volume, they were each quite hard to press, and ditto for the power button on the E51's top, which was even firmer. Common actions on the E51 are accompanied by digitized sound effects, e.g. this rim shot. When switching to the standby screen, part of a new idea, audio themes, but thankfully these annoying and time-delayed effects can be turned off. Finally, the shiny metal areas are utter fingerprint magnets, but then that goes with the territory. The stylish and gorgeously small Nokia E51. Do any of these scenarios sound familiar to you? You're standing with a casual acquaintance, they're trying to give you their details spelling out their name and address by turning off the dictionary and then using multi-tap takes forever. As a result, you search around for a paper and pen. Or you're out with the family, you're trying to find a particular location that you only vaguely remember. Starting up the web browser confidently and going online, you sit there spelling out suitable search clues into the mobile version of Google using multi-tap, while your wife and children remind you every 30 seconds that they're still waiting. Or well, you're at the queue at the bank and you check your email, there's a message here that absolutely has to have a response immediately. You start tapping out a reply using T9 and the built-in predictive text dictionary, but after 15 or so words, you realise it's going to take 10 minutes to spell out everything you need to say. So you close your smartphone, you grit your teeth, waiting for when you're back at the office and can deal with it properly. Or you're waiting for a train, you have a spare 20 minutes. Ideally, you want to have a good look through your to-do list or bash out some thoughts into a new report you're supposed to be putting together. But you forgot to bring your fold-up Bluetooth keyboard. As a result, you fire up a game instead. So it's not just me then? No, no, please don't lose interest. You need good text input more than you think. 
You may think you're more of a content consumer than a creator, but every time you look up a contact call, every time you write a text message, every time you enter a web address, every time you scribble in a new appointment and calendar, every time you add something to your blog or a comment to your photo stream, you're obviously entering text and you might be surprised if you add it all up. I find I enter around 300 words a day on average and trying to accomplish this on a keypad based phone is just painful. And I speak as someone who's pretty nifty on T9 and predictive text. It's just too slow. I've covered adding a Bluetooth keyboard before on the smartphone show, and this is a good solution if you're stationary a lot, for example, in a, a train seat or a hotel room. But let's face it, it's impractical and geeky for most people most of the time. And this is not to dismiss uh, the N95 8GB or any other keypad based smartphone, um, but at least hear the quirky side of the story. In some parts of the world, for example the USA, the very word smartphone is defined as something with a, a QWERTY keyboard, which although it differs from my own original definition of a, a device running a proper operating system to which you can add native applications, uh, the USA definition does make a lot of sense and it's easier for the man in the street to clue into. After all, a QWERTY keyboard is easy to spot. And devices with full QWERTY keyboards of all shapes and sizes have become more and more popular in recent times, as witnessed by the flood of HTC slide out designs, the uh, Trio BlackBerry stroke Nokia E61 form factor, and of course the top of the range Nokia E90. Although many of these are ostensibly aimed at businesses, having a full keyboard always available means never having to stand there cursing the software for putting in the wrong word, and never having to keep reverting to alphabetic input mode to enter a name and address in painful multi-tap again and again. I've even done some benchmarks on a variety of smartphones looking at the text input speeds which can be achieved and looking at which device is suitable for which use case. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm sad like that. But I know you're interested too. And in each case, I've tested the words per minute and estimated the number of words per day that you'll be comfortable entering. The Nokia N95, a typical S60 smartphone using multi-tap on the number keypad, 11 words a minute, 40 words per day comfortably. The N95 again, again a typical S60 smartphone using predictive text this time, 17 words a minute, around 60 words a day comfortably. The HTC Touch, a typical pocket PC using the stylus on the on-screen keyboard, 20 words a minute, around 100 comfortable words per day. The Trio 750W, a typical Blackberry-like Nokia E61-like communicator with a thumb keyboard, 28 words per minute, around 200 comfortable words per day. The HTC Titan II, a modern sliding keyboard, Windows Mobile 6 communicator, 29 words per minute, 200 words a day comfortably. The Nokia E90, the VS60 third edition communicator, 35 words per minute on this keyboard, around 500 comfortable words per day. The T-Mobile MDA Pro, also known as the HTC Universal, a now kind of obsolete Windows Mobile 5 keyboard communicator, uh, 37 words a minute here, 500 words per day. Now I'm not trying to tell you to buy a specific device, I just want to make you think, how much text do you enter in a day? Could you be more productive with a different device? Would you enter more text and do more things with your smartphone if you had a proper QWERTY keyboard? Comments welcome to slitchfield at gmail.com and I'll publish any that are particularly insightful. I've been wanting to show the upgrade to Windows Mobile 6 for a while and I've also been wanting to give Palm a proper name check after all their recent woes. And so it came to pass that Palm finally got round to releasing the Windows Mobile 6 upgrade for their Trio 750 and I leapt upon the download link to try it out. You'll see from the photos and screenshots how I got on. After downloading the 50 megabyte zip file, you have to extract the actual installer, which is fiddlier than you think because Palm have embedded lots of invalid folder information in the zip. Still, once extracted, you run the installer, which then unpacks itself again, and you're then able to run the real install routine. If you haven't yet plugged in the Trio's power, then you'll be prompted to do this. The upgrade won't work without it, even if the battery is fully charged. Then you sit back, trying not to fiddle with your PC just in case, and watch the update files get copied over. Your device's screen will then go multicoloured, as here, and a progress bar will appear to show you how far it's got reflashing your smartphone's firmware. When done, and this bit does take a good 10 minutes, so be patient, 
your smartphone will restart automatically and go through the usual fresh from the factory screen calibration, welcome and manufacturer stroke network software installs, if appropriate. After which you've got yourself a Windows Mobile 6 smartphone as evidenced by this settings stroke system dialog and the new busy strip and calendar up the top. Just two obvious symptoms of upgrade success. Music